Greetings everyone, welcome to Schoolstone. Your, or not Schoolstone, today is Hearth Center. Sorry, this is going to be the most bare bones show we've ever had, but um, I am Lotus Knight. I am your host for today because Donde is out of power, and I am joined by Brushy Tuna, your other host for the day. How are you doing, Tuna? Doing great. You know, uh, anytime Donde has any kind of struggles with his power and, uh, it's good to, it's a good day because then I gotta make fun of them for it. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, be aware we're going to make a lot of jokes about Donde's power and for the first one, he's already on screen. so everyone can see him right there. Um, that's live feed from yeah, his right. house. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Um, welcome everyone. Um, so we have quite the show today. No, mm -hmm. um, no uh, progress bar in the bottom. But what we're going to do is first we're going to talk about the pro meta and yep. some of the main classes that are the results these classes are exhibiting. Some of the main lineups. Then we're going to go over um, talk a little bit about last week. So a lot happened this week. What are um, what did we see? What were some really cool results? And how are the pro teams doing? Then we're going to go over player power rankings for Legacy and Hero Series. And finally, we are going to go over the matches for next week. So, since I'm doing this on the spot and this is more um, bare bones than usual, we are also going to, every time I need to buy time, we'll do a charade session with chat. So, you may be asked to... Try to guess what card it is or something, and we'll play some chat games whenever we. I need to buy time. So, welcome everyone. Um, are you excited for tonight's show, Tuna? Yeah, I love this. Uh, you know, I usually uh, my whole life decisions are impromptu, so this just this just fits right into how I live my life. Right. Yeah. Same here. Um, let's begin by talking about how the meta was, though. So. We had a few different lineups. Interestingly, Pro is actually super diluted in lineup. Like the lineup that happened the most had only five people bringing it, which means we're basically seeing everything. And that was Demon Hunter, Druid, Paladin, Warrior. Mm -hmm. um, performed really well. A lot of lineups, Demon Hunter seems to be performing super well, and a lot of people have been bringing it. So has Warrior. Um, what do you think? Any thoughts about these lineups and how they performed last week? Anything? Honestly, I think I think Warriors probably been performing uh, the worst out of like these some of these top decks right now, uh, just because it's easily targeted and like uh, you know. So it's like if you if your opponent thinks you're gonna bring Bomb Warrior, they can easily uh, bring a lot of weapon tech and other kind of things to help counter uh, the whole the whole deck set. So. Um, like, I think this, like, at the top here, we have Demon Hunter, Druid, Pally, Warrior. And it has three wins, two losses. Uh, I'm going to assume some of, those, some of those two losses were on the back of just Warrior getting absolutely smashed. Right. Yeah. But, um, I think it's interesting to see. Warrior wasn't as smashed as I thought. Um, so mm -hmm. if you look at last week's stats, we can see the individual deck stats right here. Um, as you can see, Warrior wasn't as smashed as it seems, as it has been in previous weeks. On the other hand, Druid was squeezed really hard. Um, so was Priest. Yeah. Both classes had around 40, low 40s win rate. While Paladin was shining, because a lot of people seem to be going for that Warrior-Druid-Demon Hunter combo. And those three classes hate to face Paladin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, and the, there's a lot of, like, the Broom Pally's looking good, the Pure Pally's still looking good, um, and so, and now there's, like, a another Colt, uh, what is that card, the 4-mana four 4-2 four Colt something uh, version starting to Colt creep Master, back out again. Yes. Yeah, Colt Master, yeah. And that version's starting to hit a lot of popularity again, so, uh, you know, theoretically, Paladin can have, like, three decks that kind of do the same, but, like, the full 30 can be uh, super well teched to however you want it. Right. I think Paladin is in a really sp solid spot, and 
I don't think it deserved a nerf, and we can talk a bit about nerfs, but I think we're going to see a lot of it this week. Um, oh, yeah. Turtle Mage gone. GA Turtle on Mage 8 gone. now. Yeah, Ooh. Priest is a lot harder to target now. Nah, you just bring face decks and kill him on turn 6. Right, C-Mac? Yeah. Just bring Hunter? Um, <laughs> They can still renew you 15 times. I mean... Both I'm not anymore. Renew Renew can't discover Renew anymore, so it's it's a lot less. No, but they can get it out of um one maker. They get it they get it plenty of renews. Yeah. <laughs> um so I think this looks Druid is probably going to be gone because it wasn't performing well last week. If I were to say anything about stats here, it's just Druid is not looking to be at a great spot for pro. Uh, I think we, if we see any Druid this upcoming week, we'll probably see Mally Druid. Um, Mally Druid doesn't care as much about the GA nerf, um, except for like in the super aggro matchups. But that's about yeah. it. If you expect, if you expect your opponents to bring like a lot of slow decks, like you said, like Priest, I, I still expect to see some Druids, and they'll most likely be uh, right. the Mally Druid version. So I think we might still see some some Druids in this upcoming week. Yeah, or maybe not. Maybe people will take a week off because of the nerf, but you know. We have an extra day to submit, so maybe people will figure it out by then. Yeah, it's interesting to see what will happen. I think the class I haven't been in Heart Center for a few weeks now, but the class that I've been I was seeing pop up a lot was Mage. Mage was mm -hmm. in its burst period, and Mage did lose Turtle, but Small Spell Mage is doing so well right now. It's such a consistent yeah. deck. I Highlander Mage has been looking good on ladder too. So huh, I have not tried yeah. that. Interesting. So, any other meta points you want to bring to now? Or... Yeah, uh, since Mako's not here, I'll talk about uh, about Shaman. Uh, Shaman went one and four this week. Uh, the worst outing for Shaman so far uh, for Pro. So, mm -hmm. take that, you Shaman lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, while I switch here, I'll give everyone a very easy warm-up challenge um, of the day. My challenge for chat is, what is the most played Shaman card? And it's a trick question. Um, I'll say it's it. a trick question? It's a is trick it because no one plays Shaman? No, but there's a <laughs> trick. I don't like it. I don't like this trick. Concede. <laughs> oh, it's... Yeah, Dabs is right. Yeah. It's, Gid it's Gidra. <laughs> I think it's Lightning because Bloom, actually. It's probably or Lightning, lightning it's, Bloom. Yeah, it, it's Lightning Bloom or Gidra. It's, it, it's, oh, it's I think it actually, two, right? it might be Primordial Studies. Oh, yeah, because of Mage. Because of Mage. Mm. It could coin. be Primordial coin. Studies. <laughs> it's Coin. <laughs> it's Coin. It could be Coin. <laughs> so is Gidra more played? Well, it changed this week, so I don't know if Gidra is still the most played. Or Bloom is still more played. They're all good. They're all yeah. good cards. For, it's for definitely not a pure Shaman card, though. But Shaman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shaman's like, hey, you know we got those cards, too. And we're like, yeah, but they're better than the other classes that you share with. Also, I think we should all ignore what C-Mac just said in chat. No, um, let's talk about it. Do all right, not guys, we ever do Lysiana, Bloom, Panda for Endless Lysiana and Shaman. Control Shaman back, baby. C Mac um, just broke the meta. Good job, C Mac. No, please don't. Um, Good job, C Mac. You're the hero we all deserve. Ouch. <laughs> so let's talk about the matches last week. Last week was a pretty big week, and we're going to start with Hype Horizon versus Canadian Clown Fiesta. Hype Horizon mm -hmm. has been crushing it in pro these last few weeks, and Cool Kid beat Tweeg three to one. McBannerface beat Wangor three to two. Liquid Ox beat mm -hmm. Phoenix. 3-2, to two. Game RVG beat Corroden 3-1, to one, and D-Money beat Yoxter. Do I have the right week, or did it trick me? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Did the system I definitely thought again? two of Canadian Clown Fiestas won. Okay, the system tricked me again. I hate when it does it. Okay. It'll yeah, be High Prize really played fast, everyone. last week. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they played yeah, yeah. us. Okay, I'll fix this right this, now. This was, this was two weeks ago. Just a reminder of two weeks ago, folks. Uh, okay. Once again, so we, this is a we kind of, we kind of threw together a lot of this stuff last second because 
Yes. Donde was tricking us all day whether he was going to be able to get his power back online or not. So a lot of this is uh, it's last second work. thrown together. Yeah. We'll make we'll it get happen. There. Um, yeah. Do you guys, everyone wants another challenge? We'll give another Hearthstone challenge. Um, we need THL jail for those ideas. No, G Kick. We cannot put C Mac in jail. He enjoys long, drawn out matches. So you think, what do you think he'll do in jail? Where like he just gets all the time to himself. It's like special just... when everyone played pro or played yeah. um, control warrior. Oh, uh, that was awful. Stop, Lotus. Those are nightmares. Can let's let's move on and get away from that nightmare of what that was. <laughs> yeah. Um. So here's the question for warm up. The one I gave Tuna. Um, oh a, God. A Hearthstone this question riddle. Was so hard. What is the classic card that has reborn but doesn't actually have reborn? So it has basically the reborn effect, but it's a death rattle. Oh, what? You gave them more hints than you gave me? That's some cheating. It's a cheat. We'll come back to chat. Let's run through some matches while they while they figure yeah, it I'm out. Yeah, I'm just almost ready. I see it up on the on the screen for at least the first two two matches here. Yeah, I'm putting them right here right now. Actually, going to jail so my mom can't take my laptop away while I play Control Warrior. <laughs> so we have Hyper Horizon versus Bat to the Bone, and for the boys versus Aeon. Mm -hmm. Um, Kugi it beat Itadamos 3 0. McBanterface beat uh, lost to Avi 1 to 3. I lost to Liquidox in a very tight game 3 to 2. Um, Gamer RVG lost to A2 Battleship 2 to 3, and D Money beat Sodoros 3 0. This was a, quite the match. I mean, yeah. I played with Ox. We played on voice because I like doing that with my opponents. And it was yeah, absolutely. it was a lot of fun, but such a great match. We had almost the same decks. Like, literally the same decks. We were a few cards apart in every deck. So, like, two or three. So, it was a really fun series. A lot of mirror matches. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just upset that the the Cool Kid versus Atomos match had to end in a, a yeah. DQ victory for Cool Kid. I would I would have loved to seen uh, because Cool Kid's having a terrific season, and I know, um, and Atomos like they're both just like super Adam top top tier players. Yeah, so it would have been it would have been nice to see like what the what the actual outcome of that match um yeah would have been. But I agree. You know, this things also... things happen, so yeah, they do. This is a hard center PSA. Don't DQ. Um, you can lose. Or do. Live, live your life how you want to. But don't <laughs> DQ. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything else to say about this first match before we go hop on into the next one? Uh, no, I'm excited to get to the next one to talk about this first match of the next match. Go for it. All right. So Buck Nasty beat Donde so bad. He uh he destroyed Donde's power for the week, you know. So Donde yeah. could not recuperate from that 3-0 smashing that Buck Nasty gave him. So well, uh, can, uh, <laughs> I'll just make a Kanye reference, but no one man should have all that power. I mean, he currently has no power. So yes. I don't know what power you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Jeffrey Shepard beat Neji Boston 3 2. Uh, a super close match, how I thought it was going to be in the uh, prior, prior week. Mata lost to Markshire 0 3. Fashou lost to Arhat 0 3. And Dabs beat Risen 3 to 1. Very tight match. Aeon is. They've fallen for a bit, but they seem to be back up or trying to get back up now. Yeah, they they had a the fairly good start of the season and um, they kind of been averaging out. I think they've been averaging like eight to like twelve points a week. Uh, I think in their like two losses came over the past like three weeks. So, um, you know, they're still doing like okay. They're still getting around those ten points that you want to get per week, even in a loss. But uh, yeah, Aeon needs to to start picking up some some W's here to get back into the the playoff contention or back into the like the top four contention here. Yeah. I think they're just outside of it. There might be fifth. Or like six, maybe, but not by much. Yeah, I mean, for the boys is also a really good team. For the yeah, boys and Hype Horizon are shaping to be the top two teams this season, and uh, it's congratulations to Diamond for building his team and for everyone playing for the boys. But it seems like 
they're putting out quite the performance. They're 5 0. Even though they yeah. don't have that extreme of a point per match as Hyper Horizon, they're they have a pretty good result. Yeah, I think I think Hyper Horizon only they got the points lead over for the boys because I think they uh they twenty pointed Canadian Clown Fiesta last week. And yeah. that uh that's what gave them this this point lead over for the boys. Right. Yeah. Um any final points about this match before we move to the next one? Take that, Donde. No, that's that's all I got. <laughs> okay. Um well, not to leave anyone in the dark here, but let's move to the next oh match. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well played, Lotus. <laughs> uh we have Dew Brasses versus the unknown. I don't want to talk about this and skip. This Where's was Dew Brasses after a yep. Roth season last season, they seem to have grown a lot. Um, Goose beat, lost to Icicles, but that was really the only win for the unknown. FVM2 yep. lost, uh, beat Solo Jazz. Yep. Uh, Bullion beat Ron Mexico, and Dr. BOMD beat Skittles. Plus, Tuna, you ended up losing 1-3 to Mr. Python. How was that match? I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Lotus. Sure. Uh, I played that match the same day I had, like, two other matches and had a setup for Salty Saturday oh. all at the same time. So I remember 0% of this match. <laughs> yeah. All I know is I lost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I've done that, that before. It was, busy, it was a busy Saturday for me. It's I think a I really to... bad idea. I've done that kind of thing before. You should never do that. <laughs> yeah, I went from this into a wild match into immediately setting up Salty Saturday. And just like, so my mind was just like always on the move, like not even like thinking about the match, like as soon wow. as they were done. So I'm like, yep, move on. Let's go. <laughs> wow. So. I, I guess I could probably put, check my chat, see what I said after the match, see how mad I was. I probably called out Ron and blamed him for me losing. That'd be fair. I don't think anyone would blame you for that one. Oh no, Ron and I just uh I roasted Ron that I'm still a higher uh, higher seed than he is. <laughs> nice. All right. Exactly how I thought that would go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, just just a rough week for for us on the unknown and uh we really need to start crushing these next few weeks or to yeah. get into this playoff contention, but uh yeah, due process is still looking very good, you know, being led off by you know, Goose's first loss in the season, and it was a tight one. Uh, yeah. FBM2 or Valerius Bay, who's in chat right now, killing it across all of THL right now. I think Yeah. Valera, correct me if I'm wrong, you only have, I think, one or two losses across THL right now? And one of, or no, it's two, right? Like one in Hero and one in Wild, I think. And the Wild one, he got subbed in for. One loss. One loss. Okay. Yeah, and I think the one loss was that Wild one in... Uh, we don't count wild. Okay, so it's it's technically two losses then, I guess. <laughs> but uh, that, yeah, I guess I guess we uh we don't we won't count the wild ones. Yeah, so he has he has one loss across THL since we're not gonna count wild. <laughs> uh, so yeah. he's just he's just been absolutely dominating. And then uh, Mr. Python Bully and Doctor Bomb D are still they're holding their own. You know, two and three in pro is is not a bad record, right? Because like you're not you're not a seed. You're playing against. You know how or like whoever else is like roughly that same record. So, you know you could be playing the 550 PRs of Hero and Legacy in the three or four seed. I mean, right. So, you know, two and three is nothing. To, nothing to scoff at. You know, actually, any any winning any any record where you have a win in is nothing to scoff at in pro. Yeah, just because of the caliber of the of the players that you have to face in week in and week out. Right, and Pro has been a really tough series this season. I think a lot yeah. of insane players are playing Pro right now. I mean, we have a really high number of Pro players that are actually playing Pro. Yeah, exactly. I mean, High Prison walks in, and there were, like, I know, like, two or three of them are, like, top 50 uh, right. legend, you know? <laughs> maybe, I think all four, are t or all five are top 100, maybe? Maybe top 150? So, you know, that's an entire team of just one seeds in a lot of, uh, a lot of series. So, like, yeah, you know, you can't you can't really blame anyone for for the records in pro. Pro is designed to be this way, and I and I love pro for that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, D D money dumpster kick W. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, uh-huh. Our next match, we mm-hmm. have F2L versus Tap Last. So this is another interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, this was oh, tighter. Man. Yeah, go on. Tighter than usually you would expect. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, Tap Last is, you know, I, I always expect Pro to be uh, super tight matchups. The matchups that really get me are the ones like the next one we'll, we'll talk about where the the gap's a little bigger, but like things like 14 to 9 or 14 to 10 or 12 to 11 or whatever, exactly how I expect Pro matches to be almost every week. Right. With the exception of a, a few matches. So. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so Glee beat C Mac three to one. Itachi mm-hmm. lost O to three to Lawful Dog. Berserk beat three O Typhoon. Your mom cat beat Rescue Wabbit two to three. And Jammies beat the last champ three O. Interesting that there were so few points in the matches. Like a lot of three O's and only one, two, three and one three one. Yeah, total amount of points for the losing matches were three. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all the other points were for the winners. Right. So it's, uh, it's a little rough. Usually but... see. Yeah. It's a little rough, but, you know, as long as, like, if the opponent gets a sweep, then your team gets a sweep, and you're all good. Just counteracts itself. It just does feel bad seeing a sweep. And then you're like, well, one of us got a sweep now. <laughs> or the rest of us right. got to go, like, 3-1. Right. So. Yeah. Um, oh, I figured out why C Mac lost. Yeah. You didn't bring Face Hunter. Way to go, C Mac. I thought you were a Face Hunter main now. Where's the Hunter? You brought oh, Shaman instead. You no deserve to lose that match. Wait, what was that Shaman? Did he bring um, Control Shaman? I assume, I assume it was uh, probably uh, Totem Shaman. I'll check here real quick. Yeah. Oh no! It was it was like control shaman? It was Aliciana shaman. <laughs> oh no, C Mac. <laughs> so since C Mac is here, He's we can do a it. quick Twitch chat interview. C Mac, <laughs> did you? Why did you bring control shaman? And did it? It well, did it win a game? There you go. I, I can answer that question for you in chat. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. I think C-Mac's going to cry when Aliciana rotates, in all honesty. Mm. C-Mac, have you been jamming that card since day one? Like, it hit like <laughs> it hit our Hearthstone accounts, and you are just like, man, how many decks can I put this card in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aliciana. I just hate it when matches came back to who generated Aliciana out of Aliciana. That was just the no. worst feeling ever. Um, for our next match, we have the Wind Keepers versus the Beer Boys. Agent PWE beat Always Just in Time three to one. Clone lost to Zabe two to three. Easy Bake beat Myanadon three to two. Um, Nails beat. I cannot read that. Um, getting it. G I T N I T. Okay, sorry, the font is too small for me. <laughs> And okay. Free Hong Kong beat Inzi 3-0. Um, strong showing by the Windkeepers. I mean, the Beard Boys, they haven't been having a great season. But they're still a good team. Zabe is an insane player. Mayan is insane. Mm-hmm. Inzi is insane. Always just in times uh, is pretty good as well. I played him week two yeah. of pro. And that's when I really got to know uh, exactly uh, what kind of player he is. Because I think this is this is his first THL season. So. Right. Yeah. No, this is a really strong team. And yeah, absolutely. The Windkeepers showing that they're not to be forgotten about. They're a valuable team. They have some great players, and let's mm-hmm. see if they can make it back up. I don't think yeah, it's I mean, too late for any team yet. Yeah, I mean this this also puts them above F two L too as well in the uh, the playoff race right now. Right. Put some one point ahead now. So that was that's a huge win for for win keepers. Yeah. Um 
And, and shall we talk about our final match of last week? Absolutely. Let's get it. Um, we have Mash and Weishas versus Canadian Clown Fiesta. So the Weishas had Heat Shock beat Tweak 3-1. Pyro beat Wangor 3-2. Phoenix beat Valdis 3-0. Or beat Valdis 3-0. Kuroden beat Ufric 3-2. Uh, and Roadrunner lost to Yoxter 1-3. So how do you feel about this match, Tuna? Uh, <clears throat> this is this is exactly I think I, I might have predicted this 5 out of 5. I don't remember. But it was pretty close. But, uh, you know, each one of these players, I think they matched up, like, almost perfectly with, like, who I would want them to match up. Like, if I got to pick, like, you play this person, you play this person type deal. Uh, sure. I think this matched up, like, perfectly, like, exact, like, skill level versus skill level or something close to it. Um, and, you know, also big shout out to these two teams that played, I think, four, maybe three or four of these matches on stream over the weekend. So, shout out to them for getting these stream matches on. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, Mash and Weisha's, uh, one and two seeds are, are killing it. Dr. Pyro and Heat Shock. And then, uh, they're three, four, five struggling a little bit here. They need to, uh, do something if they want to make some sort of playoff rush. The Heat Shock carry is not enough. That's right. Right. Brothers, right. right. The Weisha's <laughs> ever since they went down last season, they haven't come back up yet. So, yeah. I hope they can make it. I think they have great players. I hope they don't make it this week because I'm facing them. But <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think Heat Shock. I think they're all in school and doing TESPA as well. Right. So they have a uh, they have a lot that they're they're juggling on top right. of that. So I, it's it's understandable. Yeah. Um, so I wish them all the luck in TESPA. <laughs> um. Yeah. Congratulations to Saku's team. Um. I think Canadian Club Fiesta has some really strong players, so I hope they can make it. Mm -hmm. um, that being said... I, I can't wait to talk about Canadian Clown Fiesta for next week. They have this sub coming in this week for Tweeg, and man, is that sub probably the most OP person in THL right now. Ooh, we're going to have to see who's coming in. We'll leave that as a surprise. Um, so now is the most exciting, um, time of the night. It's the time for me to sing the intro to Legacy's Power Ranking song that I'm just coming up on the spot to get some time to prepare stuff on stream. Da, 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 oh, no. <laughs> da, da, Okay. Here are the, the honorable mentions for Legacy Pro Power Rankings. Do you want to talk about these ones too now? Uh, yeah, I mean, WoW 9, 2-1, uh, G-Kick 4-1, uh, Comp 3-1, Two-Star Mako 3-1, Durden 3-1. It's, uh, it's pretty good to even be like anywhere on this list because uh, there's right. a lot of math and all kinds of crazy stuff that uh, goes into this. So even if you're not even... Uh, uh, this, is for, this is for Legacy Blue. Legacy. The Heart Center Legacy covers... First. Then hero. Yeah, we and then not hero. Do pro power rankings. Yeah, pro power rankings is uh, is pretty obvious since you're seeded by your record, where this is you know your record overall in the within the seed that you may have jumped since it's uh, PR based. Yeah. But Heart Center covers the PPR for uh, legacy and hero. Yes. But um, but yeah, I mean, just to be on these lists here for PPR is a huge. Even if you're not even top ten, like just being on the honorable mentions just shows what kind of a uh, crazy good season you're having in general. So yeah. Um, yeah, and I think all of these players, like G-Kick, um, Wild9, Comp, Mako, and Durden, they've all put amazing performance. I mean, Wild9 has been really nice to have him in the Albatrosses, and I think he's going to shine really well. I think he's a great player. We had a break week last week, so yeah, we'll see what happens once we're back from this buy. Um, I think he's going to be much higher in the power rankings than everyone thinks. Yeah, I mean he's two and one with two sweeps and then a three two loss is his only loss. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that's pretty nutty. So yeah, yeah he's he's doing very good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um let's take a look at the players who actually made it to the top ten. Um in first place. Da -na -na, da -na -na. <laughs> Sports center top ten. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> in first place, we have Neji Boston um, with a 5-0 record. Then J.R. Juggerlaw with a 4-0 record. No Glocko, 4-1 record. Hat, Astro Frog in the 4-5 and five with a 4-0 record. Rebobson with a 3-1 record in the 6. Bazedink herself, 4-0 in the 7th place. And Fall in the 8th with a 4-0 record. Bit Beaker um, in 9 with a 4-1 record. And Duin in 10th with a 4-0. Um, a lot of... I like that. I like that Bass's brother is above her. <laughs> That's true. That Get her, Astro true. Frog. Don't let her take it. <laughs> Stay ahead. <laughs> yeah. If you're curious, you can catch Astro Frog's match on stream this weekend. He's playing on Schoolstone. And nice. Bass and I will be casting. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how much bias is this gonna be. <laughs> I mean, I'm always biased. I always choose. A well, I was talking. I, I was talking about base. She's obviously gonna root for whoever Astral Frog's playing against, right? She'd be like, "Oh man, yeah. look at my brother just being making stupid plays out there." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited yeah. to watch that. That would be funny to watch. Yeah, I recommend everyone to watch. And if you want to play on stream, it's a good time as any to announce this kind of thing. But if you want to play yeah. on stream, hit us up. We're always looking for matches. And if you have a match and your opponent wants to be on stream with you, it's going to be a fun time. There's no pressure. Schoolstone, for instance, likes matches in all skill levels. We just want to talk about Hearthstone. We want to talk about cards. We want to complain about Guardian Animals. And <laughs> yeah. It's just what we're there for. Um, I think I've spent like 10% of all the time I've been on stream complaining about Edwin Van Cleef. So why not a bit right. more? Edwin, I think Edwin will go either this next expansion or the following expansion. I mean, I think, I think, he, I think he's on his way Apprentice should have but... gone. I don't get how they didn't nerf Apprentice. But... <laughs> She'll probably get nerfed or Hall of Fame the same time Edwin does. Hmm. So either it will be never, or it will be soon. Turn I hope 3, 14, soon. 14, perfectly <laughs> balanced. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, any final comments on these legacy before we start Hero? Uh, obviously, this list is rigged with a uh, hat being in the four, but that's all I got to say. And base being on it. There's two board members on the top ten. Yeah. Rigged. Um, yeah, also, we're not responsible for Donde's stat system. It's probably awful, um, because it's Donde. Um, and yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> we can see maybe we're getting some feed from his house, but I can't see anything, so he doesn't seem to be complaining. I think I see a light on, maybe it's just his phone. That's all that I could see. be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's. Let's jump into the hero power rank. <laughs> Let's jump into our episode of My Hero Academia for the week. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> A2 Battleship, 3 2, honorable mention. Turtle, 4 1, honorable mention. Mr. Python, 4 1. Bill Snyder, 3 2. And Kazargar, or Kazargar, however you say it, 4 to 1. <laughs> These are some nice. strong names. Justice for Turtle. <laughs> uh, listen, I uh, next week we'll have Donde explain how the how this PPR fully works. For, it doesn't, because he kind of explained it the other day, and I was still confused. So next week we'll have Donde write up a little like script so he can fully explain uh, the this power ranking stuff. Because because uh, you'll see here in a second, there's a there's a certain player on the top ten that I don't understand how they got there. Uh, Neither do so. I. So, Honestly, <laughs> I don't get how I mean, they put Bay's Dink in any of these ratings. Oh, that's not who I was talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> uh, no, nah, just joking. Um, I think I'm, I think the seventh overall in Hero. I don't know. I gotta double check. Yeah, let's get I into it. Why don't you before call I accidentally the hero make names. fun of the wrong person? Go for it. All right. Uh. At number one, we have one of the most OP people, G Kick at 5 0. Number two, Agent PWE 5 0. Chewbacca 5 0. Dardar Binks 5 0. 
twos is four and one, as well as Astro Frog and Itachi. Some guy who's awfully garbage at this game and can't figure out how they're in the top ten at number eight. Washing the win at four and one, and Medusa also at four and one. Yeah, see, Inzi, I, I I don't understand this list. That's why that's why next week I'm just gonna have Don to explain it to everyone. Because look at me, I'm three and two. Is it just because I have a better? No, I, I just have a thirteen and seven record. I don't understand it. Yeah, it looks like they just it. edited it in brushy. No, I I copied it over to a Word document uh, for uh, Lotus to show a picture like this. Hey, this is our our attempt at a scruff show because that's all yeah. we can do. So bear with us. I can us. show. Yeah, I can show you guys a screenshot from Don Bay in Discord, but uh, we decided yeah. to post it in Word to make it more uh, legible. Yeah, it's what we have for today. Um, and again, I'm I will... saying it's rigged. <laughs> Yeah, the cursor is next to my name. But I can show you screenshots from Discord. Ping me afterwards and I'll show you. And twos is also shifted just because we decided. Oh, to... I I hit space, I think. Because, like, I told you everything posted in a paragraph. So when I hit enter, I probably hit space after I hit enter to make them look like a list like this. Listen, guys, I don't know how I'm on this list. I'll show I'm, I'm going to post a screenshot in uh, in Hero Chat as we continue on with the show. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So be sure to catch on next episode of My Hero Academia next Wednesday night <laughs> um, where All Might is going to be facing um, – I don't even remember the names. It's been a while since I watched that show. Facing some other villain for the 80th time this week. Oh, that show's so good. It's still it a is. good show. Uh, well, um, let's talk about our pro matches just as a warm up. Shall we do another? Do you have any questions for chat? Any tricks to see if they know Hearthstone well? Why oh, is, uh, anything. why can no one beat G kick? Man's 15 and one. How is he so good? Yeah. G kick explain. That's my question to chat. He did lose to Quaz. Just one game, though. Because they aren't pro. What? Oh, G Kick, you think Astral's going to beat you? Ooh. Frog Boy. It's the Frog Boy versus G Kick himself. Yeah. Because right. um... I'm not in the series. Cool kid. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's hop into this upcoming week. Yeah, let's do it. So for next week, we're going to start with Hype Horizon versus Aeon. Um, our first match is Cool Kid versus Donde. Um, do you want to call that one already? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see, Aeon versus Hype Horizon. Let's see what I have. Uh, so in the one seed, we got Cool Kid versus Donde. Two seed, Liquid Ox versus Mark Shire. Three seed, we have D Money versus R Hat himself. Four seed, we have McBanterface versus Neji Boston. And in the five seed, Gamer RVG is taking on Risen. Uh, for my picks this week, I had Cool Kid beating down Donde. Uh, 5-0. I don't know how Cool Kid's <laughs> gonna do it, but he's gonna somehow 5-0 Donde. Yeah. Uh, I have Mark Shire. <laughs> I have Mark Shire beating Liquid Ox in the two. And then for the rest of the matches, I have D Money beating R Hat, McBanterface beating Neji Boston, and Gamer RVG taking down Risen. It's a strong picks. I've actually not picked, so you're all going to hear me picking on the spot. I am going to pick Cool Kid beating Donde, who even Donde himself didn't pick himself winning. So sure, Donde also picked Cool Kid. <laughs> um, Liquid Ox versus Mark Shire. I have to go with Ox. D Money versus Hat, I have to go with D Money. Mech Banterface versus Neji Boston. I think Neji Boston wins this one. And I think Gamer RVG wins Risen for a 4 1 for Hype Horizon. Nice. I think, and then uh, just uh, so everyone knows, Donde and Mako didn't make their picks before the match, but the, or before this show, but they're going to be here. Donde had Cool Kid winning, then Mark Shire, R Hat, and Edgy Boston, and Risen. So I think he did what's called the Quad Strat, where you pick your whole team except for yourself. 
Uh, Mako had Cool Kid winning, Liquid Ox winning, R Hat being the only victory for Aeon, the Banter Face, and Gamer RBG winning. Um, Mako does not believe in his team this week. <laughs> Mako, I think Mako does this like every week, right? He usually picks like a couple matches against his own team. He usually picks up Donde against his own team. He doesn't believe in Donde. Oh, that's true. I guess this is the first week that he's done uh, done more than just Donde. Although last week on the show when you weren't here, Lotus, he said he was going to change up his strat to try to catch me in uh, predictions, and he and he got closer. He uh, he yeah. closed the gap a little bit, but I'm still in the uh, still in the lead. Yeah. Um. Any final thoughts about this match? Um, I just want to note, Cool Kid submitted Shaman. Ugh. Yeah. Um, I don't I think, know. I think I checked this earlier. I think it was Totem. I think I checked this earlier. Okay, so Totem trying to catch. I don't even know what you're trying to catch. Just anything you're trying slow. To catch something. Oh no, it's not Totem. It's uh, that's right. This is a like Galacron Shaman. You got like Tidal Waves and Plague of Merlot, Oxbow Periscoundle. Groundskeeper. Yeah, you're trying to catch Paladins, I think. Yeah, just anything lineup. slow like this. This seems like it also beats Priest. It's got a lot of value. It looks um, like a very anti Shaman, um, a very anti Paladin lineup because Shaman has Hex and cards that can end Librams. Um, you have Rogue, which has Sap and can end Librams. You have Mage, which can yeah. end Librams, and you have Priest, which can steal Librams. Yeah, so, I also like the shaman into aggro decks too. You know, evocation of frost, double witch's brew, the plague yeah. of murlocs. Uh, no lightning storms, but he should be fine. We got torrents, hack at the schemes, earthquakes. So uh, yeah. overall, this just looks it looks like a super clean list. Sure. No Lysiana <laughs> equals fast shaman. <laughs> I don't know if I would go that far. <laughs> nah, C Max said it. It's got to be true. <laughs> You ready to jump over to For the Boys versus the Unknown? Let's do it. Go for it. All right. And the one seeds, we got Buck Nasty taking on Icicles, the two seed, German Shepherd taking on Solo Jazz, three seed, Mata taking on a trash can, and the four seed, Dabs taking on Ron Mexico. And in the five seed, we have Bo Show taking on Skittles. Um, picks this week. Oh, of course, I did the typical me thing. Uh, you know, you got when you're captain of a team, you're biased a little bit. So, uh, five zero unknown. <laughs> Easy pick. Easy pick against the second best team in the series. Yeah, easy. Okay. <laughs> what you what you got this week on this uh this match here, Lotus? I see you making changes in the document as we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think you'll like this a lot. Yeah, I, I, think... I see this, and uh, this is a more reasonable thing than what I did. So. Yeah, I think so. I think um, For the Boys is going to end up winning this one hard. I think Skittles wins for the unknown. Because I can never bet against Skittles. Just not something I'm able to do. But I think mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> that's reasonable. I mean, Solo, Solo's been killing it across ladder and yes. opens and all kinds of stuff. So, like, he's also really hard to, like, if I'm going to be honest, like, him, Isocles, and even Skittles, even though he's one in four in pro, he's been killing in every other series. So, like, those three for sure are super hard to pick against. But uh, me yeah. and Ron, just we we suck. So, picking against us is uh, pretty easy. But, you know. Right. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah. But I, I like your picks. They're reasonable. Uh, Donde picked Buck Nasty, German Shep, Brushy Tuna for some reason. Dabs and Fasho. So, he has 4-1 uh, for the boys. And then Mako has... Buck Nasty, German Shepherd, German, German Shep, Mata, and then Ron and Skittles. So he has 3-2 for the boys. Hmm. Well, this is, I think this will be a close a close week. I think this is going to be whoever wins this one. I think it's going to be like a 14-11 to 11 victory for whoever wins this, this week, in all honesty. I don't, but sure. <laughs> like, I mean, Icicles and Buck Nasty are like, I think they're pretty close in like record overall. Uh, solo jazz hasn't like his two losses are three, two, uh, um, you know, Mata Mata will probably sweep his, his opponent, uh, Daz versus Ron is a, is a super awesome match. And I think we have that on stream, I think Ooh. Sunday night. So that's, I think, uh, don't quote me on that. So that's super exciting. Oh, and then, uh, and then for show versus Skittles, Skittles, super good for show is also like super, uh, super good, but he started a new job so that it might cost him, um, 
Yeah, see, like Valerius Bay almost got uh, reverse swept by Solo Jazz. Nice. Yeah, Solo Solo's been Solo's been killing it. Yeah. Um, so it's that's why I think it's gonna be close. Is like because I think our one and two seeds, if they lose or win, it's gonna be like three two. Uh, I think the Raw and Dabs match is gonna be three two as well. Um, and then Foot Show Skittles, I think will also be three two. And then who knows what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. Um, well, we'll see. Another note is just a reminder for everyone that deck submission for all series is due tomorrow because Guardian Animals and Turtle and Pigrim were nerfed. So mm-hmm. don't bring Turtle Mage well, or do one of those. One of those was nerfed, and the other one was murdered in front of our eyes. Rightfully so. It's one of the most <laughs> toxic things around in quite a while. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's keep this rolling. Let's talk about your team, Lotus. Let's do this. Bad to the Bone is facing Mash and Weishas. Avi versus Heatshock. Adamos versus Dr. Pyro. A2 versus Valdis. I'm playing Ufric. And our brand new perma sub, Dardar Binks, is facing Roadrunner. And we did get 7 2 Master Store player joining our team, so. Hopefully we're more evil to the bone now. Right. You went from bad to the bone to evil to the bone. Yes. <laughs> but uh, what you got for picks this week? I I assume I know what it's going to be, but I'm curious. I to mean, <laughs> I think Avi is going to win. I think Adamos is going to win. I think A2 will win. I kind of think I'll win. I hope I win, but if I don't, <laughs> it's fine. And I kind of think Dardar might take it too. Yeah, I, I figured you'd go five zero. I mean, you you and I are usually five zero for our teams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so I I'm close with you. I got I got I got bad to the bone winning the week, but um, I have Heat Shock beating Avi. Uh, I think that'll be a three two, and I actually have Ufric, uh, edging out another win against you, Lotus Knight. I mean, that would be my pick for a loss if we were to lose. So <laughs> completely fair. <laughs> I'm glad we're the same way. I said the same thing for the unknown. If we were going to lose, it'd be on me. <laughs> That's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, I looks think like I'm Gondek... the worst player in my team, but I'm always fine thinking that. I mean, your team is, is loaded, so saying you're the worst on that team is is not saying you're bad in any any uh, stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I mean, Avi, Adam operating system, A2, and Dardar thinks himself. like it's That's nuts. I'm excited we got everyone together and i mean i like the people we had before as well but we're a fun team it's going to be yeah. interesting and a fun pro adventure absolutely we still got five six weeks left so we still got a while to go uh it looks like donde agreed with you with a 5-0 for bad to the bone and then uh it looks like mako uh has 4-1 bad to the bone with ufric beating you as well lotus hmm. so yeah. Half half the cast teams for you. The other half is uh is against you. That's fair. I mean, can't ask anything else but honesty. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, <laughs> let's roll. Let's keep rolling. We got due process versus the wind keepers. We have FBM two, aka Reggie, aka Valeria's Bay, taking on Agent PWE in the one seed. Goose versus Clone in the two seed. Mister Python versus Easy Bake in the three seed. Boolean versus Nails in the four seed, and Dr. Bomb D versus Free Hong Kong, a.k.a. Pawn in the five. So I, I think this is going to be another close one. This is, I think this is also going to be like a like a 14 to 11 or something of the, along those lines of a win. Um, and it's gonna, I think it's going to go to due process. I got FBM2 taking down the one seed. I have Clone edging out a win over Goose in the two. I have Mr. Python in the three. I have Nails in the four, and Dr. Uh, B O M D in the five. Hmm. What you what you got for this matchup here? I think due process is going for a murder this time. I think they're going to go hard. I think FBM two wins, Goose wins, Python wins, B O M D wins, and I'm going to say Nail actually takes it over Boolean. Yeah. It's, I agree with that. Uh, Nails, I got I got to play against Nails their first week subbing in, and uh, they were super close matchups. Uh, they could have gone either way, just my top decks there. And some of the last two games were 
definitely me favored. So nails, nails is a very good player. So picking nails is, uh, I think a very reasonable thing to do for mm-hmm. sure. Um, this is a match that can go both ways. Cause these teams have some really good players. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're going to have to keep an eye out to whatever happens here. Looks like, uh, looks like Donde also agrees that it goes to due process. FBM two goose, Boolean and Dr. Bomb D winning and then Easy Bake taking it for the only win for uh the win keepers. Uh and then Mako has a three to two for um due process with FBM two, Goose and Boolean winning, and then Easy Bake and Free Hong Kong winning for the win keepers. Nice. Yeah. Um it's a strong match. I'm excited just to see what will happen. I like that it's a strong match, and then you also said that due process is just going to I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Person. Strong match because they're two <laughs> good teams, but I think it's going to be a bloodbath, yes. Um, I am a little bit late preparing for the next one, so random okay. question for chat. Let's do a random question. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What's your what favorite is... new Battlegrounds card? Oh, none of them. No fun elementals? I think on average, elementals are weak. They're not. They're so yeah. good. I mean, I've won... I have 12 straight first places in, in Battlegrounds right now since the restart. Nice. They feel really good to me. I don't know. I always play this strat where I go... Um, It's not great strat, but basically I try to get a... Uh, ease a strong board and upgrade really fast. Yeah, I mean that's usually what we want to do. Yeah, and then go elementals. I I'll, I'll give Valir Isbay that one. Uh, I think Little Rag for sure is is probably yeah. really the only minion. Uh, was well, definitely the best of the new minions, and I think the one that has uh pseudo cleave is uh the second strongest, and I think the rest of them are. Are pretty weak. I think Nomi's a bait. I I honestly think that card is garbage. So the other question is, is Ragnaros the Fire Lord more broken than Jandis Barov? No. <laughs> no. Um, HS Jandis... Replay says it is. I I, <laughs> I I'm gonna disagree with that. Is Jandis Pogos actually better? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, they have um, Ragnaros is way better than Jandis. Like, crushingly better. Yeah, I I don't like to go off stats right now because everyone's always going to pick the new heroes right. over, over like, the new ones. so Or over, like, the old ones. But yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I think if you play... I think if you play Jandis right, I think I think you're fine. So take Pogo. But I, I, I don't know. I think, I think they're on level. I, they're probably the top two. They're definitely the top two. I think uh, it's those two by far, and then it's like, and then from there. But it's I, I definitely think Jandis and uh, and Rag are definitely top two. The only problem I have with Rag is uh, you have to rely on your opponents like turning it on kind of early. I mean, it's a super good effect, but right. um, sometimes you just get blown out by an early mail house, and maybe you might kill zero minions and stuff like that. So that's like a a turn off from like turning on your hero power. But he is strong, but. Those are like there's a few problems that I can see with it that kind of make that make him balance, and I kind of enjoy that for such a, uh, um, for such a strong hero power. So, I mean, I'm excited that they finally made like a, a super powerful hero in Battlegrounds that is actually like fairly balanced off rip. So it's exciting. It's exciting to see this moving forward for Battlegrounds. Hmm. Um. Yeah. How. As I'm preparing stuff because it's taking longer than I thought, how has the Battleground series been going? Or test? The test went great. Um, you know, we saw we saw a few things that we definitely wanted to improve on. Um, but you know, overall, we were we were super happy with the um, with the Battleground testing for sure. Um, so it's definitely going in the and definitely in the right direction. Um, so I'm excited. We should we should be having battlegrounds, maybe another test or uh, more of something put out here shortly to uh, teach out, hopefully. Um, but just know that 
uh, at least space who sat in for both of them and me who sat in for like half day we were we were super happy with how the testing went nice this past weekend so that was that was really exciting as a really bad battlegrounds player i'm excited to see what's going to happen there absolutely hopefully uh hopefully we can get something uh going soon we should we should be we, we uh, i don't want to say i don't want to say anything to quote that way people come back and be like but tuna said this so i'm just gonna leave it as things i've already said <laughs> was that an attempt to mimic linda belcher's voice i have no idea who you just mentioned so i am gonna say no okay <laughs> i thought it was a bob's burger <laughs> reference um, oh i don't i don't watch that show so i have, I have no that's idea so good um Let's look at the last two matches, though. We yeah, absolutely. Canadian Con Fiesta versus Tap Last 103. Mm -hmm. This one and is here, an interesting one. Yeah. Canadian Clown Fiesta has two subs this week, and both of them uh, are super, and I mean super strong players. Like, it's crazy how strong these two players are that they have subbing in from them this week. They have based in raren um coming in here base taking the spot of tweeg and raren taking the spot of Corden for this week so um before this week started i thought this uh, uh i thought this was going to be a tap last win but uh after these two subs uh i think canadian clown fiesta will take this this week hmm. it's interesting three of us casters actually agreed in or two of us agreed in the same matches. Donde and I agreed that Base Inc. is going to win. C Mac and your mom cat are going to win. Last Champ wins and Raren wins. That's yeah, scary. You guys, you guys have been like pretty spot on like this whole time. So there's like a few matches. Like you guys are almost like mimic each other for all these picks. We've been playing. We've been doing this kind of thing together for way too long. We're awful at it. <laughs> We're like the We're worst. We're awful at it. <laughs> I, I, mean, I even forgot to put my inputs because I didn't have time last week. But I still hold the record for most correct guesses in a week. Yeah, would, would you I have 22? Anymore? No, no, never mind. I don't have it anymore. No. You and Donda share. 20. I have yeah, a 20. I've... Yeah, Donda and I have a 21. We all did garbage last week, just to let everyone know. Yeah, I saw center. it. Um, the, we, best, uh, the best the best was... <laughs> was worse than a coin. Or just as well. That's as a coin. There's, there's 30 matches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mako had 15, Donde had 14, and I had 13 last week. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So don't get mad at us for our picks. We're we're awful. Just sometimes we're correct. Yes. Um, but for uh for my picks, I'm going with base as well. Uh, but then I want uh I'm pretty close. I have everything for you, like same as you have base, C Mac, your mom kid, Rarin, but I think I think Yachter can uh can pull out the win this week over the last champ. Nerf coin. <laughs> yeah, coin too good. Mm -hmm. But, and then uh, let's see, what does Mako have? Mako has base winning, Wangor beating C Mac, your mom kid winning, Rarin winning, and the last champ winning. So we're all pretty on par except for Wang, except for Mako picking Wangor over C Mac and then me picking uh, Yacht there over the last champ, which is uh, actually kind of a rare sight for us for picking. Players have a great chance of winning when brush events against them. I have the most wins, German Shepherd. I have the most picks. I have 82 overall. Uh, I have the most of all of our center. Yeah. So they have well, the best chance of winning when I do pick them. Because I didn't pick last week because I would have gotten everything right. Oh, yeah, for sure. You would have got all 30. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely true. <laughs> I just want to know, we're barely better than a coin. Barely. It's not very good. 150? Yeah, I'm 7 over a coin flip. Yeah, so. it's like none and of I'm us have first. gotten to 60% record. <laughs> nope. None of us. And I doubt, and I doubt we will. But I it's doubt we will. To do this Bro anyways. is so stacked that it's hard to be much better than a coin. Yeah, it really is. I really do flip a coin for half these matches, to be honest. Same. <laughs> Um, All right, you ready? You ready to roll into the last one? Let's roll. We have F2L versus the Beard Boys. All um, right. Glee against Justin Time, Berserk versus Zabe, Itachi versus Mayan, Snake versus Gitnit, and Rescue Webbit versus Inzi. F2L needs this week because they want to come back strong. And I think 
I think they're going to get a good week. My current rate has um, Glee winning a really good match against Always Just In Time. Berserk winning against Zabe in another insane match. Um, Itachi beating Myanodon. Snake beating Gitnit. And I actually have Inzi beating Rescue Rabbit. Nice thinking Inzi's going to uh, get his first win on the season here. Time to turn around. He said earlier he was going to go 500 for the season. So he's got I think he's got to win out to do that. So it'll be good to see. Uh, to be completely honest, speaking of coin flips and stuff like that in chat, I actually did flip a coin for every single one of these matches because I was so torn on who to pick that I just started flipping coins. <laughs> and somehow it came out as four to one for F2L. Uh, my coin has Glee winning, Berserk winning, Itachi winning, Getting it winning, and then Rescue Wabbit winning. And it looks like uh, Mako agrees 100% on my picks as well. Yeah. Um, Donde believes F2L will win, but his difference is that Myanodon is going to be the one that's going to win for the Beard Boys. Yeah. Looks yeah. like we just cast their curses. Uh, cast their curse to F2L, though. We all have them for. We all have them for one. <laughs> We'll see what happens there. I think F2L is definitely better this season than they were the last. So let's yeah, see if for they sure. can make it. Yeah. Um, I believe this is more or less it for our show. Yeah. So we can take some audience participation questions if anyone has any. It's a good time as any. You can ask anything for Tuna or I will do our best to answer or not. Or we'll just ignore the question if we don't feel like it. I like ignoring. I yeah. feel like I feel like I feel like the first question is going to be a troll. So I'll start with the first if question for you. Do you yeah, upgrade a... on two, or do you buy? Uh, it depends on your hero. Okay. <laughs> Listen, that's a it's a very it depends on who you are. In all honesty, right. uh, you know, I mean, some people I stay on one a little longer, like Edwin. Uh, I've been trying out a new thing with um, Omu, where I level uh, on turn three instead of turn two. Um, so it, it all it all depends um, mm -hmm. on what you know what what my hero is and who I'm playing against and stuff like that. So right, it, there's a there's a lot of a lot of variability to it. Um, yeah, but that's fair um bond is asking is there a class you guys haven't brought this season and why yeah yeah shaman shaman <laughs> uh i it, it's shaman because uh, i think no taker is the best card in shaman right now and i don't know what the uh what the best build around for diligent no taker is yet so i haven't brought it yeah, I think what's the best card in Shaman right now? That's actually played in Shaman and not one of the dual ones. Don't <laughs> <laughs> obviously you can't be like Lightning Bloom because that card will forever I mean, be better. I mean, the best card it, that Shaman has in... access is probably Zilliax, but <laughs> Zillia. <laughs> I don't think that counts. Um... Nope. I mean, Shaman does have some decent cards. It's just they don't have a kid. They do. Sludge Slurper is a broken card. It's just the issue is there's nothing to support it right now. Right. That's that's how I feel with, with Note Taker as well. Like I like I honestly do think Diligent Note Taker is one of the best cards in Hearthstone right now. But there's just the whatever the package is around it hasn't been fully figured out. Yet. Yeah. It's just also School Zone had a lot of strong cards that need support. And they yeah. just have never had support for Shaman, basically. They gave Shaman yeah. a lot of cards that can work well. Like, Torrent is a really interesting card. It can be quite strong. It's just there's nothing you can play with it. The other spells are all really bad. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah, no yep. card draw. Yeah, I hope... Yeah, well, I mean, the card draw is, is garbage. I mean, right? Like, your card draw is an O3 yeah. Totem or Farsight. Like, yeah. woo! <laughs> See, I thought Trick Totem, when they revealed it, I thought that card was actually cast a spell from your deck that cost oh, that'd be less so good. mana. I'm like, that's that so, so broken. <laughs> that would break the game really fast. 
Yeah, exactly, Pawn. Like, no Taker would be the best card in, like, literally any other class. Like, even in Warrior. Like, could you imagine getting a Shield Slam back? Oh, yeah. Like, no Taker, Shield Slam a minion, Shield Slam a minion with the same card? Like, you spent, you spent two cards to kill two minions and put it to... Yeah, like, literally no Taker in any other classes is nutty. But it's... uh Yeah, even Shield Block. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, no Taker is so good in any other class. And yeah. it just sits in this Shaman where it has no... No real support. Like the best thing to do with no taker is like no taker serpent shrine portal, and then next turn serpent shrine portal again. It's like wow, yeah, that you was can double torrent. It was amazing. That's kind of that needs a lot of setup. I mean, you do pawn, but like shaman doesn't have like those huge payoffs right now to be able and to like like what are they double blooming into on like turn three? That's just a zero mana two three with overload two, because you're just yeah. getting one extra bloom. You already spent two mana. So really, yeah, exactly. Do you need a zero mana two three overload two? No, I don't think you that's do so it. much tempo loss in shaman. It's yeah. It's bad. I, think. I think you just lose the game if you do that. Yeah. Um. Also, I want to I want to hit on this other question. Do you coin before you concede and why? Uh. Yeah. I play out all my cards before I concede just to make my opponent sweat it out, thinking I'm going to somehow find lethal, and it's fun. <laughs> yeah um makes them think they're like oh no and then i just concede <laughs> i typically coin before i play mana cyclone so no <laughs> see lotus is a good player that question is not for lotus <laughs> please explain in at least 500 words uh i don't have time for 500 words so uh no just what i said repeat enough to make it 500 words there you go, German. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, that seems like more or less it. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Tuna, for joining me for this very rough but fun episode of Heart Center. No problem. Like I said, I, I love I love doing random things like on just on the go. <laughs> yeah. Like it makes for more entertaining uh entertaining things, so it's fun. Yeah, same here. I mean, I had a lot of fun. We need to check why Donde's out of power. Maybe one of the imposters got to him. But oh, no. We're going they there. They turned off flight. <laughs> we'll report really fast if we need to. And <laughs> we'll see you all next show. Um, remember, there are shows tomorrow night. There's um, yep. Tavern Talk. And on mm -hmm. Friday... Um, the streams are back, so there are going to be matches Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and Schoolstone is coming on Saturday this week. So yeah, absolutely. We have some hot matches. Keep an eye open to see what, um, what fun match you'll be able to watch this week. I can tell you, 15-1 player G Kick is going to be playing in Schoolstone. So, Ooh. come have fun. And with that being said, see you all then. See y'all!